Philip and Stafford were at the Knapford Sheds one evening. They had just got back after doing some shunting. Diesel roared beside them. Mind if I join you? Of course, Diesel. And a few minutes later, Duck and Oliver also backed down into the burbs. They decided to spend the night at the sheds, as both of them would be taking their early morning trains on their way back to Little Western the next day. As they backed in, Duck and Diesel glared at each other. Um, is there a history between you two? Oliver asked. Yes, said Duck. Many years ago when Diesel first came to the island, he made lies about me and made the fat controller Gordon, James and Henry think I am horrid. Well, I was very young and full of myself at that time, said Diesel. And I do really want to say I'm really sorry for what happened all these years. That's all I wanted to say to you. What? After all this time you want here to say sorry? said Duck. Yes. Finally we can put this back. Philip and Stafford were very keen on what happened many years ago. I am very intrigued to hear this story, said Stafford. Me too, said Philip. I want to know more about it. Same here, said Oliver. The three convinced Duck and Diesel to tell the story, which they reluctantly agreed. And so this was the story that happened many years ago. Old Square Wheels The Fat Controller had borrowed a diesel. He told Duck to show the new engine round. But Diesel made mistakes, and the trucks began singing cheeky songs about him. Trucks are waiting in the yard, packing them with diesel. Show the world what I can do, gaily boats the diesel. In and out he creeps about, like a big black weasel. When he pulls the wrong trucks out, off goes the diesel. Duck was cross and told the trucks to stop. But Diesel thought the song was Duck's fault. I'll pay him out. Diesel said to himself, but he couldn't think at all. It's not fair, he complained to Henry, Gordon and James. I never get a moment's peace from these rude trucks, and it's all because of that duck. Nonsense, said Henry. Duck would never do that. That would be dis... dis... disgraceful, put in Gordon. Disgusting, said James. Despicable, finished Henry. Diesel was not convinced. He spent the rest of the day wondering how he could get his own back. Next day, Henry's trucks chatted amongst themselves and paid no attention to him. They were very full and wanted to take it out on someone. Why not Henry? They whispered to each other. Wait until I give the word, said the first truck. At last, the signal went down. Come on, you, Henry ordered shortly. Reluctantly, and still chattering, the trucks followed him out of the yard. All went well until they reached the top of the hill. Steady, Henry warned the trucks. They heard, but they took no notice. Now, shouted the front truck. Go on, go on, yelled the trucks. And surging tender, they pushed as hard as they could. Stop! Stop! And his driver braked as hard as he dared. But Henry couldn't hold the heavy trucks properly. His wheels locked and he slivered out of control down the hill with the stupid trucks cheering and shouting behind him. Help! Help! whistled Henry despairingly. Thomas, waiting in the branch line platform, saw Henry coming but he could do nothing to help. But the hill ended before reaching the station, and Henry was at last able to bring the silly trucks under control. Gradually, his driver eased off the brakes. When he was sure that the trucks were behaving themselves, Henry came to a complete stop. Phew, he said. What stupid things trucks are. They could have caused an accident. Never mind, said Thomas. They didn't. That's the main thing. You did well to stop them. Thomas puffed away, and after a while, Henry set off again. 
but something strange seemed to have happened to his wheels. Each time they went round, there was a clunk when they reached a certain spot. What's that? he asked after a while. You've got a flat tyre, said the driver. What? objected Henry indignantly. Engines don't get flat tyres. Only cars and lorries and buses like Bertie get them. His driver laughed. It's the truck's fault, he explained. All that sliding on the hill, with your wheels locked in the same place, has worn a flat place on each of your driving wheels. You'll have to go to the works, I'm afraid. They clunked to the end of the line, and Henry went crossed into the shed. Duck was there, and Diesel. What's the matter, Henry? asked Duck. Those trucks been playing you up, have they? Yes, they have, snorted Henry. Pushed me down the hill, and now driver says I got flat tyres. Ah, said Duck. Bumpy, that. But you can't trust trucks, can you? Ah, well. I hope you get your flat suit out all right. And he puffed off to see about the next train. Diesel sniggered. He had just had an idea. Next day, he spoke to the trucks. That was a good trick you played on Henry, he said. He's got flat tyres now, and has gone to the works to have them replaced. He paused. I shouldn't really tell you this, he went on quietly, but I know you won't pass it on. Do you know Duck's new nickname for Henry? Old Square Wheels. Good, isn't it? Don't tell anyone I told you. The trucks promised. But, as Duck had said, you cannot trust trucks. When Henry came back from the works, the whisper went round. Here's old Square Wheels, it said. Old Square Wheels is back. As Diesel had expected, it was only a matter of time before the trucks told Henry that Duck had invented the nickname. I'll give him Duck, Henry said furiously. Just wait till I see him again. The trucks sniggered and Diesel smirked with satisfaction.